Bulligan, David Hosey from Hosey Consulting and Training. Today we're going to do something different. I talk about drills sometimes or specific skill sets. I'm doing, this is more of an experimental drill on active shooters and how they deal with them. This is something um, I've been developing for a bit, but I want to get out now. It's not polished yet. You'll see some video takes of, of later experimentation we did with a few friends and clients, um, five, five of us total that tried to work out this, this thing. And if you take classes from me at an intermediate or advanced level, you'll probably see some version of this in time, um, but maybe a month or two to, before I, I have it down. We'll see. So what are we talking about here? Stopping an active shooting and the preconditions are it's pistol versus rifle and you're dealing with a crowd of people. The two problems that are mostly there, the shooting problem is simple. The psychological problems is what we're trying to condition and train. The first one is pistol versus rifle. Rifle inside a building is scary loud and can intimidate people and people aren't, haven't been used to it, especially rapid fire rifle. Second and maybe more important problem is that crowd mentality and working through that crowd and not dying in a heap. People in mass shootings die in heaps. I first started this a couple years ago thinking about this and now it's what my thoughts have gelled considerably more after watching the shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand at the mosque. And the evil blank, put your profane word of choice in there. Um, live streamed it and had a GoPro so you could actually see what, how the shooting went. This allowed you to actually, if you're looking at from defending against this, how people functioned in this. I'm also taking notes from other people who responded to mass shootings, friends of mine in um, law enforcement security, different, even foreign militaries that have responded to, to these things and how how these events work and how people die in, in, in groups. I've also seen some mass casualty stuff in my own experience, but it was mostly post bomb, which is a different thing than a shooter. But I got an idea of what a lot of bodies looks like and, and the mess afterwards and how that's a chaotic thing. But, we're, but what we're doing is stopping that shooting. And the, the drill is gonna be based around a square corner Fred room or rectangular. So, get the room here. Door here. X marks our shooter entering the door. O's is our innocence getting shot. Lots in corners. And this is what happens. People run in to a corner and get sh shot. And you think, ah, oh, that doesn't seem like a cold, logical thing to do. And, and, and when I take time to think about it and everything, fear is a contagious thing. Um, I've seen this in combat, see, but you see this, human beings are social creatures and um, things spread at a subconscious level very quickly among them. Laughter in a theater. Um, yawning in a crowd or vomit at those bad kind of parties or if you've been in, a, in an aircraft doing anti-missile drills you can see it walk on through the thing. Fear is the same way. Again, I've seen this in combat both on my side and the opponent's side. Bravery, unfortunately, courage is a harder thing to spread and it's something you got to be strong in beforehand. But you can condition this to a response. And that's what we're talking about with this. So we've got our shooter shooting into people. You need not be in one of these heaps there. And outside of it, we have you, our steely-eyed killer, ambushing the active shooter as he comes on through. And I know there's a lots of different situations and lots of different environments where you think, yeah, what about the, the, the stuff where you saw the, the video in New York with that supermarket or other things like that? 
The good thing about a battle drill is you can adapt it to a lot of different things once you, got, once you, once you get the basic principles down. So we're going to talk over basic principles here. So we talked about the intimidating rifle fire, and we talked about the crowd, people running in to die in, 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 in heaps and corners, and people die in heaps when these kind of things. To avoid being that, you need to separate yourself from that. You saw that in the first drill is pushing past people. That's the other thing. And then shooting, and then why do we want to be on the corner on the wall here? So, if you're reading through a door, it's a processing problem. I've got to focus on everything that's going on at once. And I mean, if, it, if I am an evil blank, trying to rack up the highest body count, I'm just going to start picking people. I'm engaged in something. I'm not searching for someone to fight with. I'm not planning on a gunfight. I'm planning on slaughtering innocent people. So he has a bit more complex problem. His Oda loop, observe, orient, decide, act. He's already oriented on his victim, immediate victims and is going as he bears through. You, being a defender, obviously would be a little bit further from the door. But basic principles apply here. You don't have to look over the entire room. You hear gunfire the other side there. Your, your, your solution is pretty simple. Wait right here and for him to come through and then pour fire into him. So your processing problem is simple. His ones is a lot more complex because he's got to take in the entire room, shoot the people he's doing that before he gets around there. Even if he takes in the entire room and doesn't shoot first, you still have him on that processing problem going on through. If he's putting fire into the people here, here, or other corners, it may be a while to get around to you. So, two things. Get past the people. Get on this, this angle here and shoot. If it's it's you, you can do different things with center fed rooms, um, aisles in a supermarket. It's the same basic principles apply. So what I'm going to do is go out to the range, and then we're going to explain from there how I ran the drill, set it up, call, show a couple more examples of it, and then um, the basics I'm doing on, on the target, and then after action effects, and what you should and should not be concentrated on on that, in my, my opinion. So it's a little bit different day here. Um, Oregon, our rainy season is going a little longer than normal. So, excuse the wet here. So, in addition to someone running the drill and functioning as a range safety, the first precondition we have is we start with rifle fire. And I've got these corner pieces here. I use these movies around to, get to, to teach corners. If you see my angles video, you'll have that. We put an AR pistol in here with 11 half inch barrel with the muzzle close to parallel to what was going on. They were shooting at a different backstop and doing anywhere from 15 to 30 rounds in a drill. We did this drill um, over a dozen times here. I went through a lot of 5.56 ammo. We walked a bunch of dry before we did this and everything. But the point of this is to where the person taking it is having that muzzle blast on them. And in the videos, this doesn't seem that loud. It is loud. It is a tactile thing you can feel. This is a, 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 a visceral experience and you want to get people react, reacting to it. Um, I had adrenaline dumps and people shaking on all, everyone that went through this first live. Um, next thing is the victim starts with his back turned to what's going on. We're well, not the victim. Our, shoot, our, 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 our person going through the test who wanted to stock the active shooter. Turning around, he'd be confronted by two people or even they'd start pushing him from behind. So he has fire off to an angle he can't see and people pushing him. Turning around to push through that. Taking a step back, the two people you have here that push through this, this is something you need to practice dry several times. And with a red gun or blue gun, whichever you have, it's an on gun, is we would have, in our experiment, we did the people pushing against them or even grabbing on or their arms are up or something like that to try and hold on to them. One to five seconds, they'd pick random in their head, not communicate to each other, and resist them. He would, the person back here, would either work around and get to it or push through them. 
the distance to the target here is rather short. That's not entirely the point of the drill. It's a rather simple shooting problem. You don't draw your weapon until I've pushed everything else here. I push people out of the way. Then I will draw and engage. And only then. With the people who are behind you and there's nothing in between you and the target. Do not draw, do not touch your gun before you get past the people. That's the point we're trying to teach here. What we're trying to avoid here is fighting through a, cr a crowd of panicked people with a gun in hand. What could go wrong there? They might not know where the shooting warrior is otherwise and you're in front of them with a gun. Think this one through. All the time this is going on, bam, 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 of that rifle. And it's going to be, the muzzle is to be level with your head here. About 10 feet that way, pointed at a completely different target. We're not, we're not playing Russian here where we're shooting right next to you or anything else like that for, for this. I did train with Russian Spetsna. Um, no, not doing that in this, <laughs> this class that I don't teach it. Next thing, shooting on the target. This is one of the ones we use here. First part of shots to the body. And this is a volley of fire. Three, four rounds, first right off the bat. Then fill your the stop in the head and pelvic girdle. If you're dealing with body armor, ideally you should have a photorealistic target that shows more of a side profile. I need to go through law enforcement, look through photo targets, or even had one makeup for somebody for more of a side shot here. If you're dealing with body armor, immediately know it or suspect it. The head shots are first, and while not shown here, pelvic girdle shots as well. Um, turns out a lot of these shooters don't have body armor otherwise. A volley to the chest of three or four rounds is a good thing as well. Um, not shown in some of the videos, I'll show another one here with me. And again, this gets your blood up. My draw was slightly off, I got caught on the clothing on that one. This is close to a full magazine problem. A lot of our, what, what I do, what's not shown is we had a couple people with pocket pistols do this and was like, say six rounds. That's the whole magazine. You're going to slide lock on this. And that's the immediate part of the drill. If you, I carry 16 on me, rounds on me. Maybe not quite slide lock, but close. And it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Well, there's occasionally things like the Santa Clara um, Christmas party massacre where there were a couple jihadis doing things. Most of the time, you got a single shooter. So your problem is all solved in that one thing. But the corner things here, if you can get this problem, teaching people a wall. So what I'm trying to do is condition people. I'm conditioning people to take up an ambush position. This represents our door here. You can put more wall things and get more distance if you want, but that's not the point of the drill. To pick an ambush position, and there's a corner behind it here, this is, is the outline of a room. Pick that ambush position, get past people, and they may be grabbing onto you. That's fine. Um, a note, if someone else is doing the experiment and work on this, we're not talking drop it to the ground, get them in arm bars or anything else like that. The point of the drill is to teach people to struggle by them, not have a big, big fight or, or, or throw people around or practice jujitsu throws here. That's why the, 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 the two people assisting with the drill, just one to five seconds. And they pick it at random to get through it. And if the person gets around them in a couple seconds, then they just get behind them if they're even planning on five. And that all the time, that rifle keeps going until the first pistol shot is shot, and then it ends. I want response on this and intelligent criticism, critiques, or ideas that add to this. Eventually, I will be teaching this as a drill. I kind of de facto did with with, with four other people recently. But it's going to be, I'm, I'm working on refining that here. Next thing, um, never mind the rain and me getting soaked. The next thing here is reholstery. I just did a, a video on reholstery. We don't need to talk about that. Mostly is getting your gun back in and applying concealment again. You saw me draw and redo that. You don't want the responding officers to have you and gun in hand, even if there's one active shooter on the ground, they don't know what's going on. And then a lot of people put their hands up or, 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 or wait for the accurate shooters. No, or wait for the 
the responders, the law enforcement. No, there's a lot of people that have just been hurt. You need to stop the bleed at that point. And, it's, and you've got a lot of mess to deal with. Shooting, starting after the shooter has stopped the, the beginnings of killing, you have another fight to stop the killing and stopping that bleeding. This might be a good point to carry first aid supplies. It's hard to see here, but my belt functions as a tourniquet. I got whoops all the way around it. I normally have with me, um, a lot of times I'll carry cargo pockets or a jacket or something like that. I'll have Israeli trauma bandages, quick caught and everything else like that. It's beyond what I'm doing here to teach you to stop the bleed, but that's something you need to worry about. Get the shooter down, make sure of it, stop the bleed. One of the points you'll see in some of the drills, I added another one here, is we talked about the idea from some of the other people that have gone the shooting drills of taking a knee and shooting up. One, you need to make sure I have a backstop to do that safely. We put our target lower, if you'll notice in some of our videos. We put shots into the head, so in case there's people behind them or behind the other side of a wall here, you're angling your fire up into a head or up into a head here. Again, taking a knee. Again, some of, some, of my, some of the people that have been there have been through that. I had not. That's something to consider. Something for input on this. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to comments. Good day.